How exhaust condensers work with Alex Cairns. Part one, this is the introduction where Alex explains the principles of exhaust condensing, starting with what is known as an atmospheric engine. Over time, exhaust condensing became a fundamental feature and a dedicated unit is universally fitted to many full-size steam engines. Hello Alex, there's something that I've always wondered about. I do have a basic idea how an exhaust condenser works on a steam engine. I don't mean a beam engine or a big mill engine, but the little ones. I make exhaust condensers that condense the steam to water and keep the oil in there and then you can empty it, it's very convenient and all that goes up the chimney is steam. The alternative is that you pipe the exhaust up the chimney and not only do you get a watery mess at the bottom of the boiler, all of the oil starts making a noise like a fish and chip shop which is no good. What I would like to know is how do they really work and I'm sure there are a lot of viewers out there who share my doubts as to how they work. Right, so I'm really glad you asked me this question because there's a lot to know. Um, the, but the big thing is, and, and again, don't take this as shade thrown, I just want you to know, your, your uh, method of condensing and your purpose of condensers is not the true purpose. So yours is being essentially a condensate and oil trap. It's a pot for the wet stuff to land in before, you know, before anything go up the chimney or make a mess. But we use condensers for much, much more than that. And I don't just mean getting the water that you've gotten back from the steam in return to the boiler. A true condenser will increase the power of the steam engine. And I don't mean a little bit, I mean significantly. In fact, uh, so significantly that in the days of the watt engines, the days of the Newcomen engines where the steam pressures were uh, minuscule, like under one atmosphere, almost all of the meaningful horsepower of these steam engines were generated on a vacuum under the atmosphere produced by the condenser, not from the pressure coming from the boiler. In fact, some of these early engines where the boilers were made of wood or stone, and I mean the pressure vessel, I'm not even kidding you, before they had gotten iron boilers, the pressure was nothing. The pressure was zero. The steam would travel to the engine like vapor travels, you know, out of your kettle. Um, and only, only would you develop power on the vacuum stroke. And even into the days when the steam pressures were plus one, plus two pounds per square inch, this was the case. So the first thing you should understand is a little bit of history. James Watt, who of course everyone knows, he said that the separate condenser was uh, an invention that he was more proud of than his parallel linkage and, and another thing he came up with that escapes my mind currently, he was more proud of the separate condenser than both those inventions combined. And the parallel linkage was, of course, a very big deal from him. The first principle that you need to know about condensing steam, right, is that a condenser of any kind, you need to think about it as an anti-boiler. Very simply, when you have a unit of water and you apply enough heat to that water to fully boil it into steam. If this is not confined in a closed space, this wants to get 1600 times bigger in size. And if you have that cloud of steam at that size and you collapse it by cooling it into water again, it wants to contract 1600 times its size, okay? Now, if we exchange that open space for a confined space, if we're turning the water into steam, the confined space is known as a boiler. So if you boil the water in the presence of a confined space, uh, some of it will boil until a tremendous pressure is generated, at which point it will reach kind of an equilibrium of water and steam, which you see in the sight glass, until you let it out to do something. And in a condenser, when the steam enters this confined space, at, a, at whatever size it is, and then it is cooled by whatever mechanism, because there are several different types of condenser, it wants to collapse in volume, but because it's in a confined space, an immense vacuum is created. So the first steam engines, we're talking the 1700s, Newcomen and Watt, were what was called Cornish cycle steam engines. And these consisted of an engine with three valves, the open uh, admission valve, the equilibrium valve, and the exhaust valve on the more modern, where the condenser is separate from the cylinder, but the really old engines. The steam was admitted under atmospheric pressure. The piston was returned up, upward by the beam. The, the weight of the pump on the other end of the beam would be pulled down by gravity because the pump and all the pump jacks weighed a heck of a lot. So the piston would be pulled up. 
the steam would be let in hard, under basically no pressure at all. It would be let in from this boiler that was under hardly any pressure at all. The steam only had enough pressure to get to the cylinder, not drive it. And when the piston was up and the cylinder was filled with this warm steam at no pressure, the valve was closed and an injection water valve would open and water from somewhere, even, even just by gravity from a location above the cylinder, would be sprayed inside of the actual steam cylinder. The water would hit the steam, it would collapse it, a huge vacuum would be created, the piston would be drawn down and the pump jack would be lifted up and the engine, which was usually on coal mine uh, pump duty, would, would lift a charge of water with it and then you'd repeat the cycle. This was direct condenser, direct inside the cylinder condensing. And the trouble with this was, all of that rapid heating and cooling of the cylinder and piston would cause binding, it would fracture the cylinder or the piston quite often times, or the piston rod, it was very destructive to the steam engine, despite how efficient it was. Watt eventually created an engine that had an admission and an exhaust steam valve, eventually for both sides of the cylinder and a condenser that was separate to the cylinder where this spray of water was always being discharged into the flow of exhaust steam coming out of the engine cylinder and continually collapsed and as he said this was he was more proud of this invention the separate condenser than he was of his parallel motion and this other thing he came up with that I can't it's it escapes me at the moment but so this refined the condenser into an appliance instead of a part of the process in the cylinder. The engine wasn't getting destroyed by direct injection of cold water anymore. And this eventually became known as the jet condenser. Now, I need to describe the entire process of this to you because let's just say we have an engine. It could be any engine at all. Here's your cylinder, here's your valve, a slide valve engine, the steam is over the top, it's outside admission, meaning that the steam goes around the outside edges of the valve. Underneath the valve there is a pocket for exhaust, so when this slides over one way, the uh, port will be it put in communication with the center point right, uh, right in the middle of the exhaust port, and the steam will come up the port, out of the cylinder, up and over, and down the exhaust port, and out of the engine, which in this case is... This port right here, this one underneath, so it'll come down and out. And then we'll have this container affixed to the side of the steam engine, right? Just in the case of a jet condenser, an empty chamber with a pipe coming from somewhere. The pipe comes in through the wall, and inside there is some kind of a spray head. Because if it just came through the wall in a hole and the, the water stream poured to the bottom, it wouldn't be very efficient. But our goal is to spray the water in lots of little droplets into the entire steam cloud to collapse as much of the steam as possible with as little water needed. And then in this case, the condensed steam that collapses into water and the additional cooling water we've injected fall to the bottom. The condenser is a closed vessel. When the steam from the engine comes into it, it collapses. 1600 times in volume or more if the steam is a little bit above atmospheric pressure or temperature uh, corresponding saturation temperature and then what happens is the vacuum created by the collapsing of the steam the vacuum is not created by a pump or any of this stuff this is where a lot of people get it wrong the real vacuum and the continual creation of more vacuum comes from the steam coming out of the engine being cooled and collapsing now we have to get the condensate and the cooling water out of the condenser without destroying the vacuum. This is where an Edwards pump comes in. And I'm going to ask that you cut the video and bring me the triple. And that concludes the first part of Condensers with Alec Carnes. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.